Hi, this is Kat with Beta Halik, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the Gemstone Lotus Bracelet Kits by Beta Halik. Now we have four varieties, and we have a beautiful silver and amethyst. We have a amazonite and gold, a silver and rose quartz, and the one I'm going to do today here in the video is the tiger's eye and gold. So you're going to get everything you need to complete your kit, and for this kit, that includes your gemstone beads, your wood beads, your metal beads, and then you're also going to get a metal bale along with two jump rings. You're going to get one open jump ring and one closed jump ring, a lobster clasp, some wire protectors, some crimp covers, some crimp tubes, and a nice little lotus charm at the end there. And the other thing that you're going to receive is you're going to receive your wire, which is perfectly coordinated to work with this design. What you won't receive, but we do recommend, is we have some tools here. So I have a bead stopper. And if you don't have a bead stopper, I'm going to show you how to do the design without it, so don't worry. I have a pair of chain nose pliers, a pair of flush cutters, and I have these two different pairs of crimping pliers, and I'm going to show you the subtle difference between the two of them. The only other thing that I recommend you have on hand is a ruler, because we're going to be doing a little bit of sizing. And actually, that's where I'm going to start here today. So let me pull my ruler into frame. And because we're going to do our tiger's eye here, let me start by unhinging that and showing you exactly how long this design is. So from tip to tip, we're looking at just over seven and a half inches. Now that's for this layout here in the stringing. So I'm going to show you how you can adjust that as we go. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our wire here and just kind of uncoil that. And you'll get about a foot of wire. So take your bead stopper and place it about two inches or so from one end. And now our beads aren't going to fall off that end. All right. So first, we're going to string on one of our metal beads, one of our wood beads, one metal bead, and now three of our gemstone beads, one and two and three, one metal bead, one wood bead, one metal bead, one wood bead, and once more, one metal bead. Oops, there we go. Slide that all the way down. And let me just double check my pattern. So here's what I'm gonna say. So this is one of the first opportunities you have to adjust. If seven and a half is too long for you, you can adjust by only doing one of the wood beads here. So you can leave uh, that second wood bead off. So you just wanna make sure that you would end with a metal bead. So pretending that's not there. So that's one of the little adjustments you can make. And then we're gonna do three more of our gemstone beads here. Two and three. And then we're gonna slip on our bale. Don't worry, we'll attach our charm later. And then we have three more of our gemstone beads. And three. There we go. Just double checking everything. And now we're going to go back and just kind of do a little reversal here. So we're going to add one metal bead, one wood bead, one metal bead, one wood bead, and one metal bead there. We're going to add our last three gemstone beads. Two and three. We're going to add one more metal bead, one more wood bead, and one more metal bead. So that completes the pattern that we recommend to get that seven inch bracelet. And you'll notice that I have two wood beads and two metal beads left over. Now what you could do is you could add another wood bead and another metal bead to each side respectively to lengthen it if you wanted to. 
Now, if this is gonna be too long for you, you can, like I said, you can take out one of those wood beads and metal beads here. You can also eliminate it from the ends. It just depends on what size you wanna go with, which is why we recommend using the bead stopper because then you can decide, and actually if I wanted, if I got this far and I decided that I didn't even want that wood bead on the end, I just wanted as many gemstones as I could, I can just remove this bead stopper and take off that bead without having to unstring the entire thing. So once you've gotten to this point though, and you're happy with your setup and your design, we're gonna do the finishing technique. So we're going to take a crimp tube and go ahead and string that right onto our wire. And now we're gonna use those little wire protectors. Let me kind of show you what this looks like. It looks like a little tiny horseshoe and it's got two little holes there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna string through one side, go up and over and string back down through the other side. So on this side, what I'm gonna do is string up and over, but before I take my wire and go back through my crimp tube there, I'm going to take the closed jump ring and sort of string that on there so that sits there because this is gonna be our clasp now. And now because we're on this beginning side and I have a little more room, what I'm gonna do is just kinda string it up there because we wanna get our crimp tube nice and close and just sort of adjusting it to get it as close as we possibly can with leaving a little bit of space you can see. Oops, just get that out of the way. Ah, come on, <laughs> get that out of the way. So we can see that little bit of space that's happening between that wire protector and my crimp tube because we're gonna be adding a crimp cover to this. So we wanna make sure that there's enough room there. All right, so on this side, I'm gonna use the Mighty Crimpers. Now when you look at this, you'll notice that there is a little sort of bean shape that is closest to the main point of my plier. And then there's the other shape there, which is a little bit more like an oval, and that's closest to the tip. So what you're gonna do is place your crimp into that first notch that is closest to your plier there. Let me just make sure I get it nice and centered so I can show you. And what we're gonna do is just crimp it and it's gonna turn into that little, little bean shape there. And then release it from your pliers, rotate it about 90 degrees, placing it in that second one, and that's gonna crimp it together. Just give it a nice little squeeze there. So now we have our crimp all done. So we can set our pliers aside. And now go ahead and bring in your chain nose pliers there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover that with a crimp cover. And the reason I wanted to use a nice big one here is so that it's gonna look like a little metal bead. So you just get those jaws right around there and then you can come over, over top here and just squeeze that around, making it look like a round little bead. And then just kind of work it with your pliers to just sort of smoosh that down and really make it look like a nice little round bead. You might need to just kind of do some adjustments there. All right, and I'm just gonna give that one last little squeeze to bring those sides together. I know my hand's in the way, hold on. I'll show you the finished thing here in just a second. But you just want it to look like a nice little metal bead. All right, so now I have a little bit of that extra wire, so I'm gonna string it down through a couple of those adjacent beads there, just because I don't wanna clip it so close. But now I can come in with my flush cutters and snip off that extra little bit of wire. So I'm gonna set that aside. So now I can sort of scooch all my beads down to this side. And I'm gonna flip it over so I can just repeat on the other side. Now, if you do not have a bead stopper, you can start by doing that first, that clasp step first, so that you can create your little crimp and your crimp tube and have that all ready to go so then this becomes your bead stopper. I do recommend using the bead stopper if you're not quite sure of the size. It just tends to help um, when you go to figure out your design. All right, so I'm gonna do this side a little bit faster. It's gonna be very, very much the same thing. And I'm gonna thread on my wire protector. Up and over. And before I string it all the way down through, I'm gonna string on that loop of that lobster clasp there and make sure that gets caught up in that wire protector. Now, the tricky part here is on this side, you're gonna wanna really make sure that you do that little last step that I showed you first, because you're gonna wanna make sure that you can get that wire nice and close. So, one of the things that I like to do is when I'm doing my second side, and this is just helps with all stringing projects, 
is sort of bring that all together. And I can already feel that that might be a little too tight. So I'm gonna kind of loosen that up a little bit and bring that together so that when I'm doing this, it's already sort of coiled. So I know that I'm not gonna end up with pulling it really taut and then it's not gonna be able to bend like a nice bracelet. So I have it where I want it to be. And now I'm gonna use the other type of pliers here. These are the Zuron 4-in-1s. And these have that same thing. The only difference is that it's gonna give you a little bit more of a diamond, uh, more of a, rather a triangle shaped notch there at the beginning. And then you have options with three different sizes. Also, this becomes an extra pair of chain nose pliers and we're gonna use that in a second. All right, so very much the same thing. I'm just going to slip it in there. And I lost a little tension there. So I'm just gonna adjust that back up. Give it the little squeeze that I want it to and rotate it to the side and give it that nice little pinch. And now before I add the crimp cover, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off that wire there. Set that aside. And now I can come in with my crimp cover, have it cover up that little crimp tube, and I can just use these pliers, because like I said, they work like chain nose pliers, which makes them really, really great. Great designer tool. And I'm just, you can see a little bit easier on this one because I have a little bit more to grip. You can see I'm just sort of closing that up. It kind of looks like a little Pac-Man. So we just want to make sure that that seam is nice and close. And I know you're probably all freaking out because my hands are really tight in there, but I have no fear with my pliers. <laughs> there we go. So you can see how that seam closes up there. So it looks like a metal bead. So you can see it a little bit easier on this side. All right, so there is our bracelet. And the last thing that we wanna do is attach our little charm there to the bottom. So all I'm gonna to need to do is open up my little jump ring, boop, slip on my charm, and slip it onto that bail. And just give that a nice little closure. There we go, making sure it has a nice, nice seamless closure. And then you are all set. So that is how to make the Lotus Gemstone Bracelet Kit by Beataholic. You can get all four varieties by heading over to beataholic.com. We do sell these tools as well, so you'll be able to find that in the description below. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button below to get all the latest from Beataholic.